All right, this is your Gaza War Sit Rep Day 189. I've got Nora here. Hi, Nora. Hey, Justin. Um, so I I I say no end in sight, and there's a funny thing about the no end in sight today because we there was a leak in Israeli media. Nego- Israeli negotiators are now complaining to the media about how Netanyahu is obstructing negotiations. Mm-hmm. So I guess Hamas's conditions, I guess the negotiators want to just meet Hamas's conditions and have a ceasefire and do the prisoner exchange. And every time that what they're saying is every time they're every time they're they're getting it, they're on the verge of getting a deal, Netanyahu calls and scuttles the deal. So they're trying yeah. to blame Netanyahu for the whole thing. I guess Netanyahu is responding to the fact that the majority of Israelis are genocidal and don't want to deal anyway but I mean, he's the honest a, representative yeah but presumably there's a big group that does so it's messy because their army's them. getting shredded their army's getting shredded which means we go to the fronts um and uh, lots of reports from the west bank uh the past couple of days yeah. so uh big fighting in tubas soraya al quds made a video in tubas uh of a explosive device and shooting there's clashes in Kalkilia, janine tulkaram and there was a settler mob attacking people in the al Bukhair around ramallah so lots and lots of fighting in the west bank and the two bus operation seems like a big one the number of explosive devices we're seeing in the west bank is more than i've ever seen yeah so like it's been a lot like when you and i were starting out it was just rock throwing and now it's like ex- explosive devices and yeah. so light arms light arms yeah. with rocks but yeah but that's the trend uh that's the direction of the trend so as for gaza the israelis had raided nuserat camp so while there's the there's only one brigade left they they did say that their plan was to just kind of raid once in a while so they did one of these raids but as happens when they do one of these raids, they got trapped in an, another ambush, a major ambush. A con- they trapped a convoy. The resistance trapped a convoy. They report of three tanks and two bulldozers in a minefield. And they said they confirmed kills. So maybe there will be video of that for you guys to break down uh, in your next live stream. Uh, sure. Sor- Soraya al Quds showed a captured drone in Khan Yunus. And we also, um, they also identified what, Nusay, what in Nusayrat the Israelis were attacking? You want to guess what it was? Primary school. Uh, primary primary school. school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's either that or a, a, a hospital. hospital or a clinic. Yeah. So they attacked the new camp primary school. But again, this is this pattern of them losing, them being willing to lose really expensive military assets mm-hmm. to go after schools and hospitals, to commit atrocities in schools and hospitals. Uh, not a good trade, but that's how they fight now. Um, there's a new front I have to report from cyber war. There were two cyber attacks. The cyber Avengers take credit for attacking Israel's electricity network. And they claim that they're responsible for power outages in Haifa, Ashkelon and elsewhere. And a different, a different group of hackers called net hunter claim to have breached the ministry of military affairs and are threatening to sell the data unless well, there you go. are released and stuff. So whole new front there. Um, Iraq. So Iraq, actually, the Iraqi resistance made a statement where they said, uh, they they said, it's clear to us the Americans have no intentions on the horizon to withdraw from the country. So this whole, there's a whole dance been going on for years now, I guess, where the U.S. says, as long as you stop attacking our bases, we'll make a timeline to leave and while you're attacking our bases there's no way we're going to leave and so they attack the bases then they stop for a while then they attack them again because the u.s doesn't leave so we're probably reaching another moment especially because of the assassination and uh that israeli did of the iranians in the in damascus the Iraqis are probably going to start attacking those bases again. They haven't in a while. It's been months, as far as I can tell, since they've attacked uh, U.S. bases. They've focused on hitting Israel with drones. Uh, okay, Lebanon. 
constant barrages of rockets, uh, Kfar Shuba, Al Samaka, Ramtha, Bayad Blida, Al Zaora, Al Marj, Carantina Hill. Those are all just ones that I saw today. So the usual 10 plus attacks every single day. Um, and then on the diplomatic front, there's everybody's waiting for Iran. Um, there's one of my favorite accounts, Ibn Riyadh. Mm -hmm. He made a tweet where he said, breaking news, the U.S. predicts that they're going to make a prediction in the next 24 to 48 hours that Iran's right. going to do something sometime in the next 24 to 48 hours. Yeah, that's pretty um, accurate. Apparently, the U.S. is asking everybody to ask China or ask China to ask Iran to show restraint. And everybody's kind of saying, you know, we're, we're not going to leave us out of this. But the Gulf countries, Turkey, lots of countries have said, don't use our airspace. Yeah. If you plan to retaliate against Iran for retaliating against Israel. So it's like there's a lot of things getting lined up. It seems like Iran's trying to line everything up diplomatically before they do whatever it is they're going to do. Yeah, and and uh, part of part of the the psyop really is mm -hmm. uh, is is just that is like waiting. Yeah. And so we saw today, like all you know, the Israeli news channels were freaking out because Israel apparently grounded all the flights in and out of Tel mm -hmm. Aviv. And a lot, I think, too. Like, um, so there's no air traffic at all oh. over over Palestine. It's pretty. It's pretty interesting. And I, I gather also that Western countries, India, have all said travel advisory. Like, don't go. Yeah. I don't know. Why Which is like, who is going to the end of the anyway? Say but... that before. I know exactly. <laughs> what What were they waiting for? No, I mean, hasn't tourism in in yeah. Israel dipped like ninety percent or something? Yeah, I mean, there's so many reasons not to go. <laughs> so right? many reasons. There's like, there's many reasons not to go. Yeah, like uh, safety, but also mm -hmm. not wanting to participate. Um. Right. So. And then Nicaragua closed their embassy in Germany. And I wanted to give you the the floor, Nora, to talk a bit more about Germany, but our beloved, mm -hmm. our beloved Germany. Yeah, just, not just, mine. Being <laughs> Germany, just being Germany. Just being Germany and doing Germany, Germany. just being Germany. Germany just being Germany. So yeah. So yeah. Take oh it God. away. So today um was the the beginning of this like two-day conference called the, the Palestine Congress uh in Berlin. And um, people from all over the world uh, were coming to hear people speak, uh, you know, these like giants um, of, of the movement, like uh, Salman Abusitta, the historian and cartographer, um, who's from one of the, who's born in one of the villages and now what's called the so-called uh, Gaza Envelope. Um, and uh, was a witness to the Nakba, was expelled by the Zionists. Um, and uh, also other people, uh, journalist Habib Jamal, um, my colleague Ali Abunima um, is scheduled to speak uh, our, our, tonight, our time. Um, and uh, Dr. Gassan Abusitta, who of course, uh, the British Palestinian surgeon who was working at Al Shifa and um, forget the other Al Aqsa Hospital, I think, um, for the first couple months of the genocide. Uh, and he was actually he was coming to present at the conference this morning and was detained and interrogated for several hours by German uh, customs uh, officials, and then ultimately deported. Um, from and England, from like he's, yeah, he's a British subject. <laughs> yeah, he's coming from London. Yeah, um, and uh, but this, and then uh, during Salman Abu uh testimony that he was giving by by Zoom, uh, virtually to the conference, the Gestapo, <laughs> the police literally is that what swarmed still, in. Is that what they're still called, or is that? I mean, I think it's the German translation for secret police. Um, okay, all right. But anyway, but I'll, I'll just call them Gestapo, sure, because like, why not? Because they are. 
like dozens and dozens of uh, office police officers swarmed into the conference, uh, shut it down during Salman Abusita's testimony, um, and cut the video feeds, cut the electricity to the conference, and basically shut it down. Um, and this comes after like weeks and weeks of uh, the German government and media um, kind of whipping up this fury over this conference. Um, there was even, I put it in I just my wanted notes. to show one, one of yeah. my favorite Gestapo images. Yeah. There so this we go. is a Jewish guy. Yeah. That's the like Jewish voice for peace uh, type equivalent chapter. Yeah, it's a very Germany. small yeah, yeah. diminutive Jewish man and then some gigantic German police just Aryan police manhandling yeah. him. Yeah. And it's just like this is yeah. This is this is 2024. He's wearing a yarmulke on his head with a, <laughs> this, a, like with have, a watermelon. Have, in 2024, we've got we've got German yeah. police manhandling him. Well, people Jewish in man. the background are saying like never again, never again, never again. It's pretty remarkable. That's 20 They make it up. That's Germany, That's Germany in 2024. Just being yeah. Germany. Um, yeah, there was a, there were news bulletins on German subways over the past couple of weeks. Uh, I, I saw a tweet, uh, th these like news bulletins smearing the conference uh, with the mm. headline as like anti-Semites plan hate summit, right? So like this was just being like whipped up um, by, by the state and by... Um, state media. Um, Ali wrote an article last week um, talking a little bit about the conference, um, but uh, I'll just read just a, a couple sentences from it. He said, uh, German media are smearing the gathering as anti-Semitic, extremist, and a hate summit. This has prompted calls to ban the conference with which German authorities are reportedly considering. Obviously, they followed through with that. German media have also speculated that authorities might issue entry bans on international speakers, including this writer. So that's what they ended up doing uh, with uh, Gassana Busitta. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, what can we say? Germany being Germany. And not only, and uh, I don't know if you have that video that I sent you of Gassana yes, Busitta uh, in the uh, taxi uh, talking I'm about gonna, the conditions that were put on. Gonna, I'm going to pull that up, but there's a, yeah, there's yeah. a tweet by Roderick Day. He kind of retweeted my tweet about... Like I retweeted Ali and Ali yeah. retweeted, or Roderick retweeted me, but he said something I thought was really fascinating. He goes, Germany presents a weird, tricky paradox. It committed such heinous crimes that it cannot have any autonomous pride, but precisely because it doesn't have any pride, it has no decency and nothing to lose. So it keeps indulging in perverted, dead-eyed nihilism and fascism. I think that's a yeah, that's, that's, an interesting, that's pretty accurate. It's an interesting, like... <laughs> dead-eyed nihilism. Psychology, like... That's uh, it like a mass psychology okay let me grab uh the it's like those uh like in the big lebowski the the thugs who come and take the rug and they're like yeah germans like we are nihilists <laughs> yes that's right word for <laughs> word yeah uh gaza blog and bio comrade sweezy here's what was being said at the precise yeah. moment german police stormed the room surviving child with all his family killed children deliberately die denied food and water starved to death and killed well rushing to get food, all yeah. means of life systematically destroyed. And then boom, the police come in. I'm just going uh, Incredible. On, Incredible. On feed. Let's, let's just, uh, let me just try to grab. There yeah. it is. Okay. So this is Middle East Eye. I don't know. Uh, we won't like try to show the whole video, but he says, uh, Middle East Eye, Gassan Abu Sitta, um, details how he was detained. He wanted to attend a conference. So it's three minutes long. I, I don't think we should we probably shouldn't play it but please go and check out yeah those. it's incredible i mean yeah. they basically said like not only was he detained and then deported but um and this i don't understand how the law would work in this way but he said that like even if he were to deliver a, a you know his his testimony his address uh to the conference virtually by zoom um that he that that would be illegal under German law and that he uh, might serve jail time for that. I don't understand how you can, that could you can, happen. You can, it, so it's committing a crime in Germany to be beamed right. into Germany to say something Germans right. don't want to hear. Don't want to hear, right. 
but this must surely have happened before. This can't have been the first time. So Germany must be arresting all kinds of people for beaming into Germany. I guess there must be a list. There must be a German active German intelligence units roving the world, <laughs> rounding people up for talking about. Yeah, Namibia here, here and... he is talking about it. Even if I was outside Germany, or if I were to send a video of my of my lecture to the conference in Berlin, then. That would constitute a breach of German law and that I would endanger myself to having a fine or even up to a year in prison. Now, here's a question. Would he be able to serve that year in prison over Zoom? Shouldn't the punishment fit the crime? Fit the crime, yeah. That is one I of mean, the weirdest. They've lost their minds. They've lost them. They never They never had their minds. They never I mean, recovered. They, they never recovered. They, they were never denazified. And that's someone else. I think it was Muin Rabani, Rabani who made this tweet where he said, you know, they because they participated in the, gen the genocide, they feel like they have the authority to yeah. make sure that they participate in this one as well. Yeah, yeah. Germany sells be included. like 30% of yeah. Israel's weapons come from Germany. So yes. it's not a small. Right. Not small and, money either. No, and this is, you know, this is precisely, I mean, Gassana Brasita said it in one of his tweets. He was like, this just proves Nicaragua's case to the ICJ. Absolutely. Nicaragua has, and you've talked about this, but Nicaragua has brought Germany to The Hague um, over its uh, complicity in Israel's genocide, primarily over its arms exports and political cover. And so this just proves the case. Gassan said something like... Um, he said something like, uh, you know, if if you wanted to to obscure your crime, you would uh, you know, you would try to silence the witnesses um, okay. and and cover up the evidence. And this is exactly what. This right. Is exactly right. What and I mean, do. when when uh, when the International Court of Justice ordered the provisional measures uh, against Israel months ago at the, yeah. in South Africa's case, they sp one of the measures is you're not supposed to destroy evidence and stuff. Right. That was I think that was one of the things right. they said, right? <laughs> right? Like don't and and so here we have Germany. and it's just like basic like crime. Like, that is stuff, kind of a right? kind you of don't... a panic move though, right? A little like, bit to to shut the electricity off during shut the, the electricity off. Yeah. That's really something else. They are it's pretty German. They're nervous, but I mean, it could be it could be just you know it could I mean it's hard not to you know come to the historical conclusion the appropriate historical conclusions yeah. but but it's also like i also think there is an element of panic because yeah. i don't think they want to be i don't think they like the u.s and israel always violate international law they you always. know that's their thing but but i don't think germany wants to be in breach of international law like that no. like it, you're not like they're sure those, not helping their case like the, yeah yeah. Well, they, I guess they figure the ruling hasn't happened yet. Yeah. It'll be interesting I mean, to see what they do. The the chancellor, right? Like, uh, what's his name? Olaf Schultz. 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 Yeah. Um, he was telling the uh, the parliament, and Ali also has this in his piece, like just like a week after October 7th, he said something like, um, uh, Israel's security is Germany's raison d'etat. Right. The reason for being basically what? the reason for being a state. Yeah. So, I mean, they're really like throwing their whole chest into this. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hasn't Germany existed since 1870 or something? Apparently just 1948. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. What did they what, was, what did they exist for between 1870 and 19? Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, but that's not a question we should answer either. I guess. I mean, Germany should be redivided. Don't, don't right? look into that. Seriously. No. Okay. All right. Um, so, all right. As I always say to people, when I finish the news, uh, that was the news. So um, if you want to get off the train now, you can get off the train now. But Nora and I are going to talk about defeat because it's been a weird few days in the opinion pages, Nora. It has been a weird few days in the opinion. I'm kind of loving it. Mainstream media. <laughs> Kind of love it. Okay, and I'm. I think we're gonna have to finish <laughs> with the most, the most dramatic, which was by Chaim Levinson. Yep. Who's saying what can't be said? But let's build up. Let's build up to Chaim Levinson. Okay. Let's okay. build up to Chaim Levinson. I think we start with the the sober 
Tom Friedman. Oh, yes. Um, has Hamas won? Hamas has flipped the script of a military invincible in It's Tom Israel. Phillips, not Tom Friedman. Tom Phillips. Oh, did I say Tom Friedman? You did. And I was actually like, oh, yeah, yeah, Tom Friedman. Of <laughs> no, course it's Tom, it was Phillips. Tom Friedman. So isn't, isn't he like Sir Tom Phillips? I got my Toms mixed up. It's okay. This was April 9th. Yeah. And he says, it is up to the West, moderate Arab states, Israel, and the Palestinian Authority to deny them any kind of final victory. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the West, moderate Arab <laughs> states, Israel, and the Palestinian Authority are up to this task? Tom Phillips? <laughs> I don't know, Tom Phillips. He had such know. high hopes. I don't know if they're up to this this task. So his th he, he basically goes through and he says, unfortunately... Um, He's basically like, unfortunately, the key. Yeah. So here's the nut graph, as the journalists uh, mm -hmm. like to call it. Uh, the key, of course, is to somehow put together a package, putting an end to the current fighting and securing the release of the remaining hostages. Um, the stumbling blocks to such a passage are massive. The understandable hardening of Israeli opinion. But my own worry, Tom. Tom Phillips' own worry has long been that a number of factors, including the settlement enterprise, the ongoing shift to the right in Israeli politics, mm. and the inadequacies of the Ramallah leadership mean that the window for a two-state solution is now closed. It's closed. And the greater problem might be Israel's, it might be trapped into an occupation. You know how you stumble into... Im I mean, are we in 1973 right now? Like, yeah, I don't understand... Trapped. Trapped. <laughs> yeah, Sir Tom Phillips. I mean, he's like Lawrence of Arabia here. He was the mm. uh, ambassador to Israel and then ambassador to Saudi. He's like the normalization British guy. Sir. Yeah, he's a sir. He's um, a sir. He says his heart is breaking, but despair should never be an option. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. Right. Okay, Sir Phillips. Sir Phillips. Okay. <laughs> um, two state solution, he said. And mm -hmm. that leads us to our That's next That's the one. only option, right. Let's mm -hmm. lead it to the next one. The oh. only way for mm -hmm. Israel to truly defeat Hamas. This one in foreign affairs, oh. Ami Ayalon, right. April 11th. So you know a two-state solution can't happen. The window is closed, but also the it Zionist dream only be, it's the only way. Depends <laughs> on a two-state solution. There is <laughs> one thing that can stop Hamas in its tracks, mm -hmm. and that is a two-state solution. That's right. how we're going to find a winning narrative. Winning narrative. A winning narrative. We shouldn't be naive. It's a murderous organization. Mm -hmm. When every Shema position he held, Mr. I alone treated <laughs> Hamas as a ruthless terrorist group. Uh -huh. But. But. But right. the Palestinian people must have reason to believe in a diplomatic process that will bring about the creation of a Palestinian state alongside Israel. Like this, this guy's oh, trying cool. to get people excited yeah. about ending the war and he he makes a sentence this long <laughs> a diplomatic process that will bring about the creation of a palestinian state alongside israel they must have reason to believe in a diplomatic yeah. so that's what we, that's what we have to give them we have to give them yes, reason, to, reason believe to believe believe in a diplomatic process yeah. that will bring about not the their rights of right a palestinian state we can't no, give them their rights no but but a, but a process to believe reasons to process. believe in a process right so that's the best this is the best we can do this is the best we can do to beat hamas Incredible. any military victory will turn into defeat if it undermines the core values mm -hmm. of a jewish and democratic israel of course mr ayalon i don't think you've got what it takes i don't no. think you've got what it takes um no. how about how about if we how about if we take a longer view um with <laughs> alongside Mr. Minister Benny Gantz? Who's, oh, who's promising so to good. who's promising to that middle youth and middle school today will one day <laughs> fight in the Gaza Strip. So so Ami Ayalon It's an unending wants, war. It's um, Ami Ayalon wants to give you hope that uh in a process that'll lead to a two-state solution. Yeah. Benny Gantz wants to give you hope that your you that too will get to yeah, commit atrocities. That your twelve-year-olds are are being preened. Did you pick any good ones out of this? 
Yeah, th- there is a lot actually. <laughs> yeah, see. Tell- so I got so okay. So he says like the most important task is to return the northern residents, you know, okay. i.e. settlers to their homes, right? He's like, he's like, along with the the release of our hostages, we have to push everybody back to the north. Like fat chance, right? Um, and then he's like, we must expand normalization deals with Saudi Arabia and other nations in a way that will lead to a strategic revolution in the area, oh. whatever that means. And then um, my favorite, which is, he says, we must remember we are in a battle of national determination and we will be more determined than our enemies. We will be more determined. They're not Future determined tense. yet. Future tense. We will be more determined. Maybe when those kids, maybe when those middle school kids come right. of age. <laughs> when, they, when they come of age after prom, we will be more determined. Right. Okay. I mean, these um, people are just spiraling. Okay. Now we have the Wall Street Journal. Oh, yeah. Do you understand? I just, I'm showing all these because this is just in three days. Yeah, yeah. In three days, there all yeah. there's this there's this uh, epidemic of defeatism. Chin yeah, up, absolutely. you guys. I know. Chin up, imperialists. Get a get a <laughs> hold of yourselves. Israel wins Gaza battles, but risks losing the war. Tactical. I mean, gains. what? Okay, but what battles? Right? What, what, battles? what are the battles that, that they lay out that they've won? Okay, let's against see against children in hospital beds and battles we as someone who's seen these battles we won the battle Khan Yunus Mm -hmm. the battle of Khan Yunus no 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 watch John break down what happened in Khan Yunus the campaign is a major success they've killed thousands of Hamas militants and destroyed many of their rockets tunnels and other infrastructure not true Mm. not true at all tunnels Tunnels. Remember tunnels? They haven't talked about tunnels since like November. They've destroyed many. They say. Yeah, they say. There's no details. A captain? No, none. Who fought in Khan Yunus said hit early in the war, his troops knew why, why they were fighting, but then they started to wonder what the purpose of it all was. I don't have answers to give my soldiers. Just shoot at anything that moves. That, that yeah. was the answer. Yeah. I mean, you're dismantling hospitals. You're yeah. Yeah. Uh, destroying Hamas. It's uh, take Rafa. There's no de- there's no military details about these battles no. they're winning. I know. So even though they're talking about like this contrast between tactical and yeah. strategic, their tactical victories are also. Uh, Doesn't he say something about Sinwar in that one? Oh, yeah, they like they quote killed... Hussein Ibish. <laughs> oh God, they haven't killed. Um, they haven't killed Sinwar. That's right. I mean, saying. that's like their. That's yeah. But that's it's like it's mean. all. That's also like. That's also, the strategic bankruptcy of this writer who's talking about the strategic yeah. bankruptcy of. Uh, like we just Israel. need to kill Sinwar, and then yeah. Hamas and will just, be defeated. You, yeah, you yeah. guys haven't figured out that like, killing somebody is yeah. not gonna get you no. anywhere. Uh, which, you know, if killing is not getting you anywhere, here's someone who's recognized, this was months ago, though, to be fair, to be fair, this is months ago. Um, but this is Carolina Landsman. It's making the rounds oh, now. Right. I hadn't, I didn't see it back in January. Yeah, me Did neither. I guess it's nope. making the rounds on Twitter now. And that's why we're yeah. seeing it. But it's it such a great headline. Hamas laid a genocide trap for Israel. <laughs> why are you making us do uh, this? I, look what you made us do. You made us do yeah. genocide. This is like a yeah. real admission. You don't want. It's pretty make... amazing. Amazing admission. Do you I wanna... mean, it was like the Golda Meir quote, right? Yeah. Like, we will Which never one? forgive the Arabs for making us kill their children. Right. Right. I thought you were gonna do the one about how. Wow. What Which was the one? other one? The other one is. The other big one by her was is she isn't she the one who says uh, peace will come when they love their children more? Oh than... yeah. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not even gonna repeat it. Makes Psycho. Sense. Uh, any, any, any gems in this one? Um. Uh. God. No, I mean it's it's total like dreck, but uh, right. So he, she's going after Gideon Levy. She's saying, you had, "Oh, you this is this yeah, one. this is the one." Um. Yeah. Oh, what does she say? She's she the something like uh like Hamas, um. Here it is. I found it. Yeah, there it, it is on the screen. Yep, 
It you planned and executed a murderous attack in the style of a pogrom, uh, which this time, for the first time in the history of pogroms, finds Jews with an army that can strike back, oh right? So God. this is like classic Zionist anti-Semitism, where they like, they they denigrate um, the the you know the Jews in the old country who were slaughtered uh, during the pogroms, and they and they look at them as weak and feeble, and um, you know like kind of deserving of their fate. Because totally, they were like weak. they didn't fight yeah. back. They didn't fight back. They didn't deserve. Yeah, exactly. And now here's like strong, you know, Zionist Israel um, that now has an air force and can wipe out you know, tens of thousands of children in one fell swoop. Um, and and so it's this like very like anti-Jewish uh, uh, tenet of Zionism to like to condescend and smear the Jews who who wouldn't fight back um, as, yeah. as though they didn't fight back. I mean, as though they didn't. Right. Of course they did. Um, they didn't just like no. it's just it's so it's so disgusting, it's so disgusting. The Hague was in January, right? South Africa yeah. took them to the Hague in January. Yeah, at the end of January. So, oh, the end. So she, yeah, this is, yeah, this is part yeah, of that. So vile. She, she's trying so to, vile. but it's like, it's not a smart thing to say in the media. No, and it's, it's also it wasn't a fucking pogrom. It wasn't a yeah, pogrom. Right. No, I mean, these not. are the same people who. Sorry, I'm not. No, no, to... go ahead. That's good. We're good. But he, but like, uh, I mean, they they keep talking about how like this was the you know this was the worst massacre of jews since the holocaust completely forgetting about argentina's dirty war of course which we've talked about before um and also completely ignoring the fact that israel massacred many if not most of the people in the kibbutzes on october 7th and that this had nothing to do with the fact that these people in the kibbutzes happen to be Jewish. They are settlers. And the and 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 the Palestinian resistance forces that broke through their prison, it, it, they weren't doing it because out of some like anti-Jewish animus. I mean, this is like the most basic fact. Um, but this is the way that Israel and Zionists are laundering, you know, what happened. And and they just keep harping on it. And it's disgusting. Um, Lawrence Friedman, uh, this is, this is a little, I don't think we need to go into this one, but, uh, Lawrence Friedman, I think is the journalist who wrote a reasonably, I don't know, accurate book yeah. about 9-11, right? Was that the one? The Looming it's, Tower? Is this the yeah, guy? Anyway, remember. Netanyahu has launched a war Israel can never win. That's yeah, about and it. this was I the mean, most defeatist one of all. No, I, I love no. it. It's so sad. And, and like, and he, no, his no, like, the. Chaim is more defeatist than this. Chaim Levinson is is the most defeatist. Yeah, yeah, he's the most defeatist. Yeah, um, he this talks. Is, this is Lawrence Friedman, though. Oh, oh you're doing the Lawrence Friedman. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not really. Ahead. There's not. I, like I said, there's not that much to say. This is the professor. No, no, this of one, war I didn't even. This yeah, is just was, hemming and hawing. He's like, exactly. maybe there was evidence. Maybe there wasn't. Maybe yeah, they should yeah. have done it. Maybe they shouldn't have. Right. Uh, there's problems. Maybe maybe it'll pause. Maybe it won't. It's one of these articles that just he's trying to cover all his bases and not really have said anything much by the end yeah he didn't say anything yeah so but you know it's not a bad summary i suppose of things right. that have happened but he he really doesn't even take a stand it's like no no this like happened those... and then that happened and, and then also, who knows like, what's gonna happen yeah and like like things there are lots of really irksome things like yeah uh shifa hospital was raided last november with idf claiming with some evidence that hamas right. had built a tunnel right uh, caveats right right right. it would not what, be what a evidence? surprise if hamas fighters mingled right. with civilians like atrocious yeah atrocious anyway let's do chaim let's do now, chaims now oh my god it's chaim, so fun chaim's article is devastating <laughs> I, I like i don't know what he's doing if someone he's spiraling you know, if someone who was like like just yesterday i was fighting with someone and if you're I'm not going to name you, but I'm, you're probably listening to this, but like, I, 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 a lot yeah. of what I do on this channel is to try to fight defeatism on our side. Yes. Like there's no, you're not helping anybody by, even if you're, you know, you're describing like 
things, horrific things that have happened in great no, detail. We, we agree. Yeah. Uh, you know, you've got to at least have a call to action. Okay. The situation yeah. is bad. So here's what we need done. Yeah. Chaim can't even manage that. Mm. Chaim is, Chaim is in bad shape. Chaim. Oh, he's, yeah, I know. He's in a bad way. Yeah. Chaim is in bad shape. We've yeah, lost. Yeah. We've <laughs> lost. lost. Truth must be told. This is the, a clear... my favorite is his second paragraph there. Can I just read it? Read it, read it, mm -hmm. read it. Some of us, I have to read it with drama. Yeah. Some of us maliciously lie, others innocently. It would be better to find solace in some airy carb with a total victory crust. Maybe this is more like a beat poem or something. Airy carb? Yeah, with a total victory crust. But it might just be a bagel. When the solace ends, the whole remains. There's no way around it. The good guys don't always win. I, you, I, I'm still stuck Sorry. on the airy carb. <laughs> I know. And the airy carb with a total victory cross. airy carb? What are you talking about? And then, and then he then talks have... about Gabriel Garcia Marquez. What? What is he? What is happening? Like he need... <laughs> letters don't always. His point of this whole thing about Gabriel Garcia Marquez is, is that letters don't always reach their destination. Yeah. Sometimes beautiful love is cut yeah. short. Painful. Israel really has no diplomatic arms. exit. <sighs> and then okay. he like turns it all on Netanyahu's on this guy. Shoulders. He's like, it's all be a hundred percent. It's because of this guy. And this is interesting right. too, because it's not just um, it's not just defeatist. It's also like, what is this? What is he yeah. saying? Theoretically, we could have been <laughs> in a better place. How? Yeah. <laughs> we could have uh, rooted Hamas out quickly. How? How? <laughs> How? Uh, could have been replaced with a coalition of countries, global and Arab backing along with the Palestinian Authority, we could have what? created a viable alternative to Hamas and Gaza. How? We could have created, right? How? Like the whole, it's just like settler panic. We're gods. We're gods. Yeah. We're gods. We can gods. make whatever We're we gods. want. We can will it into existence. <laughs> but it's Netanyahu's fault. That uh, airy carb. And then the dream is, again, Hamas will surrender and mm -hmm. Yahya Sinwar will be killed. It's Yahya Sinwar being killed. It's always, That's, you know, you it's know, it's just kill one somebody. guy. Yeah, you can always kill somebody and that'll solve the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Iranian regime will soon implode. Uh, we need to tell the truth, even when it's uncomfortable, yeah. even when it hurts, even if some people deplore it, even if it lowers morale. We need to stand up to the BBS propaganda, even if mm -hmm. attack dogs are sniffing at our crotch. Yeah, <laughs> so gross. What? Like, he's sick. You you've got a like just the, the number of images this guy is producing. Know, he's, he's eating an airy carb that turns out to be a bagel. <laughs> he's got attack dogs sniffing his crotch. He's got beautiful love bleeding so from a cut. <laughs> he says something in there too about um, tell high will fall again. And yeah, do like, you know what, what that means? I don't no, know. What that I means. had no idea. I had to look it up. And? So tell high. I had to. Look, this is from Wikipedia. Battle okay. of Tel Hai on March 1st, 1920, which gave oh. Tel Hai its fame, was significant from a Jewish perspective, far beyond the small number of civil combatants on either side, mainly due to its influence on Israeli culture, both inspiring and enduring national myth and profoundly influencing the military of the Yeshuv and political strategies over those several decades. I I, I still don't really understand. So it was some, some battle... small group of Arabs that beat yeah. a small group of... Jewish yeah, settlers. Exactly. Okay. Maybe yep. people there will know. But then it, he it's says an Israeli thing, yeah. No cabinet minister will restore our sense of security. Every Iranian mm -hmm. threat will make us tremble. For you. And then he again, the last yeah. sentence in that paragraph. You in truth, it. we're a shtetl with an air force. And that's on the condition that it's awakened in time. So again, going back to that other that lady's crazy, like super anti Semitic zionist thing about you know about the weak jews like well israel is just oh it's just a small victim shtetl but we have an air force like a, you know again both the victim and the aggressor which one is it which mm -hmm. one is it many shtetl combat soldiers check this out 
Many combat soldiers are indeed lions. They mm -hmm. got up and left home. They fought, demonstrated skill as soldiers, and chalked up impressive tactical achievements. Are we seeing the same telegram as you, Chaim? No. Because... Lions? Our defeat doesn't I mean, like, the either. stuff that they feed to lions. Yeah. And also, like, the stuff they, the, the, the atrocities that they filmed themselves doing. Yeah, like, what, what exactly. Li you're, yeah, you're they're lions, lions of atrocities. You, yeah. Because you detonate buildings because you yeah. shoot children or yeah. lions yeah. so we keep fooling ourselves okay yeah, it's just um it's one else? of the most schlockiest yes. like it's just so badly written from like a just a... it's interesting though because the rafa thing yeah. by the time they this is very interesting by the time they enter rafa the actual event will have lost its significance that's very what interesting. What does that mean? It means that he, I mean, this is something that I think he understands that Rafa is not going to change. Rafa is not going to change the game. Right, whether, but he still whether, wants the Rafa invasion to happen. Well, to happen. yeah, but he's kind of, he, he, there's, there's a certain recognition. Look, he says for a couple of months, he's been saying, we're going to enter Rafa right away. Tomorrow, tomorrow, here I go. I would believe TV reality figure Ohad Buzagal Buzaglo telling me I'm his one true love before I would believe one tr word from Netanyahu. This is probably whatever a, that means. Yeah, you have to watch Israeli TV to get that. Yeah. No, um, procrastinate for as long as possible, and in the meantime, lie. That's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, I've seen freer people at the Dungeon Club. Okay, buddy. Um, and being contacted by a lot of citizens who ask, "Have we given up on Rafa?" We will enter Rafa. Da, 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 da. Rafa is the newest bluff that the mouthpieces are trying to fool us and make us think victory is just moments away. So he doesn't, I don't think he has an opinion on whether that whether winning Rafa would win the yeah. war. I think he's just saying now it's all, they're trying to fool us with this and that. We've already lost. And now they're trying to dangle this Rafa thing in front of us. Um, and... Uh, the hostages, but this is this is devastating. Look, yeah. the war's aims will not be achieved. Hamas will not be eradicated. The hostages will not be returned through military pressure. Security will not be reestablished. <laughs> the more the mouthpieces shout that we're winning, the clearer it is that we're losing. Lying is their craft. We need to get used to that. Mm -hmm. Life is less secure than before October 7th. The beating we mm -hmm. took will sting for years to come. The international ostracism won't go away. Yeah. And then that's it. Like yeah. the conclusion is we need to get used to the sad reality in our homeland. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it. Right. I mean, tell and, and then at the same time, tell your middle schooler to like, get ready. Yeah. I don't know. It's so they're, they're, they're panicking because of the way that they lie. I'm almost like, I'm almost like, are they doing well? No, you know, like for the past four <laughs> days, they've been they've been talking amongst themselves yeah. about defeat. Like what's what's going on? Yeah. Are they talking about defeat because they want to, you know, like? But I don't I don't get the sense that they're lying. I get the sense that they're like, yeah. you know, they're grasping. Yeah. And and Chaim is not even grasping. Chaim is just like he's given up. No, almost. he's wallowing. Yeah. Yeah, he's just like I want to take a minute. I wanted to I just give me a minute because I want to take a minute. Yeah. I mean, I think like. Yeah, I'm, you know, and we keep talking about this, um, how like the whole. Like the 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 glass was shattered on October mm -hmm. 7th on, you know, Israeli psychology, like they just mm -hmm. they can't they're obsessed with it. They keep they're like. um Kind of like relitigating every single minute of every, you know, it, like it, everything that happened that day. It's like totally saturated in the Israeli media. They are, uh, it shook them up because they had this idea that they were impenetrable, that their army was, you know, the, the most, uh, you know, uh, valiant army in the world that, um, you know, that, that they couldn't be touched, that their soldiers were expertly trained, that, 
you know, that Hamas and um, and other Palestinian resistance forces were like, you know, defanged in some like crazy, you know, fantasy and that they had successfully imprisoned two and a half million Palestinians in a concentration camp and they didn't have to like think about them. And I think I think people are really spiraling. I, I think they're they're having to confront this like real reality that the rest of the world and primarily Palestinians <laughs> for the last 76 years um, have been screaming about. And and so, you know, I think I, I think they're panicking. I think it's like thrown, you know, their entire national identity into a spiral and good. Yeah. Yeah. So there is one other thing, I guess, that I've been uh, you may have seen. I think it was the cradle mm -hmm. and the U.S. Did you see this? The U.S. dangles Yemen bait, but Ansar Allah doesn't bite Khalil Nasrallah. Oh, I didn't see that one. So That's it's true. basically like this is also it also fits with our theme of desperation. Yeah. Um, Because like it's like uh, there's some kind of they have some source on the Houthi side, informed Yemeni sources revealed to the cradle, the U.S. offered Sana a whole bunch of stuff. Like, wow. basically... Uh, they know that, yeah, that 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 diplomacy is the only way forward. Yeah, so they said, okay, look, we reduced the role of Saudi-backed presidential council, council, so they're the alternative government that they've been mm -hmm. trying to prop up since yeah. 2015, accelerated signing a roadmap with Riyadh and Abu Dhabi to end the aggression. Well... I mean, that's not a great offer since the Yemenis have ended the aggression themselves by targeting the Saudi oil fields. So, that's right. <laughs> um, but release withheld public sector salaries from the Saudi National Bank, lifting the country's siege entirely, reopening Sana Airport, easing restrictions mm -hmm. on the port of Hodeida and a prisoner exchange agreement. Uh, repair the damages, remove foreign forces from all Yemeni lands and islands, and remove uh, Ansar Allah from the from the State the Department's terrorist, terrorist list. list. And you know what they said? They said, "We are not within the circle of those you dictate to." That's a great quote. That's a great quote. Yeah, so, I mean, and that's and you know that's not peanuts that they dangled. So that's I mean, that. those are those are real, and so it just goes to show how like incredibly principled Ansar Allah is but well, they're yeah. doing they're doing this for Palestinians that's it that they are Just... keeping this block blockade um in place until Palestinians tell them can... tell them it's cool tell, tell them to call <laughs> until it out they I mean, tell it's them just yeah. yeah so yeah. um I think we'll stop there Nora sounds um, good We'll stop there. And um, I don't know, you know, it's a dynamic situation. So I mean, yeah, we'll uh, be back. Might have to do another sit rep tomorrow. We'll be, we'll be back. <laughs> we'll see, we'll what, see happens. what happens. Um, we'll see what happens. So uh, like and subscribe. And uh, what I always tell people, hang in there and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Nora.